production. That could be the production minute. Yeah, hey. Or not. Or or we can lead into the podcast saying, man, what a good production minute. Welcome back to We Were Gamers. <laughs> One, two, seven. I like it. Uh, y'all can assume there was some... There were some minutes. Trust spent. us, it was a good production minute. Yay! <laughs> How's everybody doing? It's Monday. Monday Night Football might be over. I don't know. I haven't checked. Oh, I think Monday Night Football was over before they kicked. There you go. <laughs> Can we just... That's the correct take. <laughs> I guess uh, we have to... Whoa! Whoa! Wait a minute. I went to make sure the score was till, still 20-6, to 6, and it is not. I guess yeah, we're but... going to interrupt with a little football here at the beginning. But do you care, though? Uh, do I care that the game is almost tied? Mm, okay, that's surprising. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was 20-6 to 6 when I looked last. It is now 23-20. to 20. I was going to say, can we just blanket ban the Giants from primetime games? I'm still in uh, favor of that. <laughs> okay. I think it's still worth the time, maybe to. Oh, I think it's. Uh, I think it's worth the uh, the Manning faces in front of the primetime audience. You know, Twitter yeah. is taking care of that, and we will still get Manning face. You just have to look for it a little bit harder. Yeah, really. Now you're in it for the Odell Beckham freakouts and him throwing fits for no reason. Well, so he got 143 yards today, and a touchdown. Yeah, he was doing well last I checked. Uh, Sterling Shepard has 167 yards. So that's amazing amount of yardage. We'll get back to this at the Rantasy Minute because I'm unsure of my trade. Nah. And y'all know why. But that's for the end of the pod. We start off the pod with games. Yay. Or also... Things related to nerd nerdy stuff, which is sometimes not games, but instead TV. I like TV sometimes. Do you, though, JJ? Do you like TV? Do you like TV made by Matt Groening? Uh, yeah, I do. I've seen many shows that he has made. How about this Netflix one? We talked about it a little bit ago. I'm guessing maybe you finished Disenchantment by now? I did finally finish Disenchantment. It took us a while, uh, you know, watching at our own pace. Yeah, I, I don't know that it's a easy binger, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, some of those middle episodes are a struggle. <laughs> uh, should we do a spoiler warning here? Uh, as long as that's okay with Michael, who I think hasn't seen. Yeah, it. yeah, sure. I mean, I've, we've we've heard a little bit of of Andy's filtered thoughts on I, the, I the full didn't arc. Spoil anything? No, no, no that was the first spoil time free. through. Uh, yeah, let's do a little spoiler talk here then. Um, yeah, let's hear it. So, I mean, okay, the story <laughs> goes basically. You get a you get a layout of story in the first like two episodes. And then it goes nowhere for eight more episodes. <laughs> and then the Ooh. very last yeah. episode has yep. a thousand hours of plot condensed down into 30 yep. minutes. It's essentially like they what expected... What a nightmare. Yeah. It's like they expected 50 episodes to get to where they were going to go. So they had a bunch of filler episodes. And then they didn't then... write the part that they should have written over those episodes. Like, I'm... And characters disappear for a long time. <laughs> Like the uh, prince that gets turned into a hog. I thought it was funny that they brought him back later as like the bit character who comments when someone says something dumb. But also, why did they bring him back? <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, Gosh, just all the... Okay, the whole plot with the wife of the king you knew was going to be a thing, right? Because Bean's mother, you know, was turned into a statue. And that's the whole thing, you know, going into the... Yeah, you learn that in like episode two or whatever, right? Like that's sure. not not that much of a spoiler. But this is one of those things that sometimes you set up as the like series MacGuffin, not the first season MacGuffin. Yes. And so then the fact that they like undo that in the end of the first season in like, you know, I mean I guess in the first five minutes of the sec of the last episode, right? Yeah. And you're like, Oh, this is not what I thought this show was gonna be now, I guess. 
is is the main character dead? <laughs> is I mean, yeah, uh, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I guess they've already established you can bring people back to life, so who knows? Right. But like, yeah, man, wow. <laughs> I did like it. I did. I did like it. There were genuinely, genuinely a couple, like three or four, maybe of those episodes that I thought were very funny. Yeah, like when they uh, invade the the gnome town. <laughs> yes, and uh, the slaughter ensues. <laughs> or you know, there's a lot of like great moments in the show. Yeah, but I found, and what I was trying to get at, and when when we previewed it, was I found it so uneven that I just couldn't get. A, f- a lot of shows like that depend on a rhythm and even yeah. if it's you know the Futurama style of waiting for the cadence of the jokes and the the you know three act structure that they had in each episode and all that right um this just didn't feel like it had any structure to the episodes at all yeah it it felt like too many of the episodes there were legitimately some that I thought were really good the one where they uh went to the candy witch uh the that was a great episode i thought uh it's uh michael it's like a play on hansel and gretel but the candy witches are completely innocent okay they just like uh, they just made this house out of candy they just like it and, and <laughs> they like the candy and they want no nothing to do with anyone hansel and gretel are i would call um extremely aggressive yeah they're yeah. like children of the corn style have taken over the candy house and are like luring people to eat them yeah uh i thought that episode was very funny uh and then like the the kid the son of the king later then talks about having ptsd from almost being boiled alive in that pot (laughs) it's just like okay the series knows like their jokes can call back and it's funny um, and I liked that, but you know, like I said, there are some episodes that are just complete nothings and you were just like, what even was this? Why did we there do were, this? Yeah. There were a lot of episodes where Bean goes out and gets drunk. It's like, go out, get drunk, have adventures and then but come back the and end where you started. Yeah. It's not really. Learned nothing. Yeah. So your your description of of the plot being right up front and then all at the very end actually reminded me of not, you know not to, to sidetrack this but it reminded me of something else that I know Andy you watched um, was that six episode reboot of X Files. Oh, dude, that JJ, did you watch a lot of X Files? Uh, in the nineties, yeah, I yeah, I liked that show quite a bit. So you know how they did the plot in the in those episodes, except for maybe the final two seasons of the show. You're talking the majority of the episodes where it was kind of like a monster of the week thing. Monster of the week thing with every third episode being heavy in the conspiracy, and then sprinkled in there were lots of behind the scenes things, like he would randomly meet with the cigarette smoking man and get a nugget, you know? Yeah. Um, for a long time and then the movie happened and then the last two seasons happened and it was literally just all the behind the scenes stuff all the time with the kid and the right that whole thing kind um of was bad at the end so michael and i got uber jazzed and thought we're gonna watch this new x-files and it's gonna be our jam and uh they started off with what you kind of expected which was Where's everybody been? What are they doing? And what's the plot of why they're all back? What you would and want Michael, in a reboot? Yep. Good first episode. Real solid first episode. Yeah. If not a little crazy and a little bit like, whoa, I feel like we're behind the the ball here. But that's okay sure. because the rest of the show is going to catch us up. And then, <laughs> Michael. Like four episodes of Monster of the Week, one of which just did not stop like it went on about 20 minutes too long we kept thinking this has to be over Yikes. <laughs> and then maybe the last episode and a half yeah half of half of like the fifth episode and then all of the sixth episode finally got back to where you were hoping they'd be like halfway through this arc My. yeah and, and so there were only like- six you said yeah. yeah, I think the I think the problem was that no one from the audience perspective knew that there were going to be more episodes coming, but I think that the the writers probably had a better than good 
feeling that there would be more episodes following this up. And so they didn't have to get you, you know, they didn't have to pace it for six episodes. They could pace it for what are there now? 16. Right. Yeah. Uh, And now of course I have not watched any of those because it left such a foul impression. I have them all DVR and I'll get to them at some point. You know, well, I was actually talking with some coworkers about some TV stuff today and someone said they had, st- they had picked up a show that had come to Amazon or Netflix. One of those, like, here's a whole season and binge it yeah. ca- kind of things. It was some, it was like a primetime TV drama of some sort. I don't, all of those seemed the same to me these days. It was about the military of some kind and it, spies or whatever seal team maybe <laughs> I don't, ncis hawaii i really couldn't tell you hawaii 50 whatever they said just went in and then out of my brain immediately so 911 I, no i think that's still on tv chicago fire you could just keep naming him i'm not going to know so uh but he he said to me and he was like you know i i watched like you know, there's like a season of this and like my wife is really into it. So I was like, okay, I'm going to watch this and catch up and then we're going to watch it together. It's going to be great. And he watched the first like season. He's like, oh, okay. I'm kind of liking this. And then he saw they had two more seasons, right? So he's like, okay, so I can catch up and then be on the current season with her and everything will be great. And he got like halfway through season two and then got busy and didn't have time to watch. And then just like never felt the need to go back and watch the rest of it. That's not a good sign for a show. So it sounds like maybe something similar just happened to you guys with X-Files there. Likely. Oh, boy. That's too bad. They did that show dirty. That was uh, was a good show back in the day. Yep. Yep. Uh, Well, will you watch Disenchantment if it comes back? Yeah, probably. I assume they're making more. I also assume that. Um, Gosh, I really hope they are because they just leave a cliffhanger at the end of season (laughs) one. So, uh, yeah, I would watch more. Okay. I might use you as a guinea pig for more. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hey, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Uh, you know, uh, speaking of which actually Netflix, uh, canceling some shows these days. Oh my. Oh yeah. Uh, uh well, Marvel mainly, um, yes. and uh, well. Netflix have kind of begun the parting of ways. Yeah, Disney making the making the cuts. Hope that you well, were not interested in Luke Cage or Iron Fist because those won't be a thing anymore. Uh-huh. I, I kind of liked Luke Cage. I have heard that everyone really liked Luke Cage, and I would not be surprised to hear Jessica Jones far behind, and they keep the Defenders, and maybe daredevil and punisher it sounds like daredevil just put out a new season so that one is there at least was with this one i don't know if there's so, more beyond this there may be a chance there that the defenders stay the rest of the defenders disappear and they keep that and punisher and that's about it uh, which is too bad i think uh luke cage sounded like it was pretty well liked by really everyone i talked to um Iron Fist sounded like it needed to go, so that was probably for the better. <laughs> yeah, I think that was general consensus there. Yeah. I wonder how they pick, you know? I, if it's up to Netflix, it's got to be just straight viewership totals. You know, but they... Man, I don't know. Netflix is so weird because they're not beholden to those numbers either because there's the infinite tail at the end, right? Um, I mean, I guess advertisers don't want to hear about that. Um, or, you know media properties they want all that bang up front but yeah i don't know it just seems to me like it would be a case where like what is the you know obviously if it's going to be an expensive show and and cost a whole bunch to do all these effects and stuff well okay maybe you tone it down or whatever but i don't know i don't know how you make those calls it just seems weird it's like they're like oh bright was a success but how can that be (laughs) Because you and I and everyone else watched it. <laughs> Pretty much. God. I mean, it's a success, if right? If if, if it's so bad, it's good, which but almost is. It, not wrong, but... Then it's a success, I, because they'll get people to watch it, and they'll watch the next one. I'm curious. If, if Will Smith is in the next one, 
and it's some sort of sequel-ish thing, it's going to be just as bad and maybe just as good. I also feel like that's a hard comparison to make, right? Because the time investment to watch Bright, Good, Bad, or Indifferent would only get you like two episodes into a show like Luke Cage or Iron Fist. Yeah, it's two hours total, right? Yeah. So if you're judging, you know, if you're judging success of the TV shows by the, the number of viewers who make it all the way through then I can definitely see for the same amount of time investment why you might consider Bright a success and compare to TV shows that were popular but didn't necessarily have the same, you know, percentage of people finish them. And, you know, there's like there are other people who watch those shows and they're like, oh, I don't watch these new shows, like especially the ones on Netflix and stuff until either – they're rapping or there's a bunch of seasons to watch all at once because they like to do the binging thing. And you can't really in a 10 episode season of shows that have, you know, 45 minute episodes or, you know, 50 minute episodes. That's not a lot compared with some of the other shows that get on there and then have six, seven, eight seasons, you know? Yeah. There's what, eight seasons of walking dead on there right now. Yeah. Uh you know, or, you know, some of those like old sitcoms and the, uh, or the comedy stuff. Like there's just tons of episodes of old shows out there. If you've never seen it, like that's a massive amount of TV. And so it's like, are you going to watch the one season of Jessica Jones or Luke Cage? I don't know. I mean, obviously some people did, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, you know, they're spread now across FX, uh, Netflix, ABC, and now they're going to have a streaming service of their own. And they know that the movies have already hit Marvel fatigue. I would not be surprised if basically everything except for the super duper popular ones that Netflix has gets the axe and moves to the streaming service. Yeah, I think unfortunately. And they have to pare that down. If they're all going to put all that on the streaming service, they got to pare it down and draw people back in, get them started again on new shows. And that's a tough sell because the new shows are things like, what, Runaways and... Is it that... Inhumans. Is it, what is that, The Gifted Show or whatever? Isn't that the X-Men? Yeah. 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 Well, that's already out, too, and that's another one that would probably get the axe here pretty soon, would be my guess. It's on TV, though. Right, yeah. Oh, you but think it's not doing well? Not on a Marvel, not on an, uh, a Disney-owned network. Oh, right, gotcha. Well, wait, hold on. In a few months, it'll be on a Disney-owned <laughs> network because they bought Fox. Ay ay ay. <laughs> oh no wait no they didn't get fox the tv channels right they get they get everything except for fox news okay so they get fox the broadcast television channel but they don't get fox news the news channel i don't know if they get the channel channel but they definitely get everything that was on the channel right all the ip properties oh sure and everything else. so i guess they do own uh, it then in the end or they yeah so they now still they get that they own all their FX and Fox shows again. <laughs> <laughs> what a... I'm uh... so, I'm, you know, part of me is shocked that when they decided they were going to do a streaming service, that they didn't just outright just go, and with our stock, we're going to buy Netflix. You know? I I don't think Netflix would want to be bought like that, but also, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's Disney, and if they want something, they kind of get it. And there's really no, uh, there's no argument to be made that they can't have Netflix, right? There's an argument to be made about a lot of acquisitions outside of that, but Netflix is just a delivery service. You can't really hold them back on buying that. So anyway, we're way off track here. <laughs> eh, it's okay. It happens. <laughs> That's what the show's about, I guess. Uh, yeah. So that's it. That's it on TV, I think. I, I don't. Disenchantment, meh, but worth watching again. I, you know, if you like the Matt Groening stuff, then yeah. Otherwise, maybe skip it. Yeah. Again, though, it's not The Simpsons, so 
Right. I mean, it's not Futurama either, which honestly, right. maybe I like Futurama even more than The Simpsons. But I guess we'll never know since it didn't have long as long uh, on the air. Right. Uh, let's talk about some video games. Do 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 video games. Um, yeah. JJ, Andrew, how's that new game plus treating you? Uh, I got so okay. Dragon Quest refresher for last week for right. people that missed it here. Uh, Dra- uh, Dragon Quest JJ Eleven and Michael are are in new game plus territory, and we argued about uh, whether those should exist. But there's probably an update here, right? Yeah, uh, Dragon Quest Eleven. Uh, I I beat the last boss of the end game, so what people call the post game, I guess, or Act Three. Uh, you know, I don't know how they just. Dis- anyway, it's the new game. The story is now over. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know Again, how to. See it's episode it's really hard to talk about. Um, <laughs> but the you know, there's still so much stuff in that game that I didn't even do. And I was just like, you know, I don't, I don't need to go through this other dungeon and grind out to like the last two super bosses or try to beat the bot, like the, uh, challenge battles in certain time limits or whatever to get every recipe. And it's just like, you know, I don't, I don't need to do this. I don't need to level my guys to 99. Although actually doing that would not be that hard since there's a really, really broken experience (laughs) thing that you can do, uh, which is thankfully extremely helpful. I probably would not have finished the game without that. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, I beat that last boss. Uh, there was like more credits after that. Um, nice. And it was like done. Like they were like, Hey, this is actually the end. That other stuff was not the end. So, right. Yay. And do you feel, um, that cheated was a, or uncheated? No, that was a good game. I, okay. that, that was a, every twist, every possible, plot point you could probably see coming from about a hundred miles away if you were paying attention to all the text uh but you know you don't need that stuff it's fine it was just a the game is just happy to tell you a little story and you know go about its way uh and i liked it I, I had a good time michael did you also take advantage of new game plus uh yeah i, I got part way into a uh, a new game plus on time spinner um which is which is fun i and i saw someone make a comment um i didn't so i didn't actually boot it up in the crazy nightmare level 1 mode but i saw someone make the comment in one of the forums that the opening that up that level 1 mode would actually be really fun to watch as a speedrun race mm. how so just in the sense that by the, so you've already, at that point, you've already played through a good chunk of the game or, you know, all of the game, depending on how much you've completed it. And they kick the difficulty way up for the nightmare mode. And then you're locked into level one. So the, the level of precision that you would have to have at that point to speed run in that category would make for an entertaining run to watch. And then, you know, you stack several people into it as a race and it just becomes that much more fun. Hmm. It's like, you know, it would be like watching the, 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 some of the super Metroid races that they do in, um, games done quick. Games done quick is coming up here. And one of the comments they made is that they're trying to get less races. And I don't know that I enjoy that. I think that's good. I love the races. Honestly, okay, I'm going to be the voice of reason here. You guys have (laughs) gone off the deep end. (laughs) Okay, the races are fun if you are watching live, but if you, you know, like me, and I assume you guys, which is why I'm surprised you you take this opinion, uh, are watching the, the, either the VODs or the YouTube videos or whatever later, the race is hard to watch. There's no, you know, because you can skip to the end and see who wins. There's no like excitement in the race. This is, it's already over. You know, already what happened. So like the stuff that I want to see at that point is the speed runs. And it's very hard to watch people in a race do speed run. I think because the screen is like quarter size or half size. And it's like, I would rather just see the full screen on the one guy who is doing the best or whatever. 
Um, I, I they got a... kind of carried away with races. And it's like fun to have a couple, but like I feel like last year it was like half races or something. It was just too much. I think it depends on the game too, because there are a lot of games that that when they're raced. The routing has been so optimized that you're watching four people all run at the same thing. Um, but uh, which one was it? The Legend of Zelda randomizer race comes to mind. And I did watch that one after the fact. I didn't catch it live. But I think it was so much fun to watch because it's so wide open because of the nature of the game. Right? You don't know what is in any of the chests and you're just trying to find enough items to get you to the end game. And so all four of the runners went in totally different directions and it was hard to tell at any given point who was in the lead other than being able to sort of track, okay, these are the things that they're short that they need to get to the boss. But then for the last like 10 minutes of the race, everybody comes back together and you realize how close they are to each other. And I, I think it made for a much more fun race, both probably in the in the moment and rewatching it after the fact. So that one in particular uh, sounds awesome. Uh, I don't think <laughs> I saw that, but I have seen other Link to the Past randomizer races that they've done since then. Uh, and those are a lot of fun to watch for sure. But in, like uh, in some of the games where it's like, hey, Super Metroid, they're all using the same strategies. They all know the same routes. So it's just waiting for one person to screw up and then fall behind the other three, right? Or four or whatever. Yeah. So that's less exciting, I think, to watch than just watching one person do it. Um, one other thing that happens in the races is uh, a lot of the times there's someone, because they're racing, racing, they don't really talk. So th unlike a speed run where a lot of times you get a lot of silence or – uh, reading of of donations or whatever, which are both fine. Um, you get the guy on the couch that's explaining almost everything. So I feel like I get more explained to me about stuff. And you also sometimes get people that try different routes or different tricks because they've fallen behind. So eh, it's kind of interesting. I do watch live, so I have a tough time knowing because I don't... I've only ever watched a few VODs. I think Wind Waker... And a few others when when I really want to see like a tough or long run or something long to put on in the background, you know, um, or when I use the VODs, but I'm more of a live watcher. So, yeah, um, I typically will just go back and find the games that I already know I want to see because they have certain games every year that I want to watch. I want to watch the Symphony of the Night or I want to watch Super Metroid or whatever. And since I can't watch live the ma vast majority of the time. I'll end up going back to have to watch those on VODs or whatever. It sounds like you have a different um, viewership need, and maybe that's something that they uh, heard a lot about, as my guess, considering the drop in, in races coming up. But we'll, we'll see. Uh, yeah, you know. and I think the races are good in some cases. Like that link, that randomizer, um, those randomizer races are awesome. So, <laughs> you know, uh, who knows? Uh, and it is still fun when they do like really wacky stuff, like blindfold races and all kinds of weird, just like off the wall stuff. So there's mm -hmm. plenty more room. I'm not too worried for them. Yeah. And speaking of, in case you guys are curious, they have already published a preliminary schedule for AGDQ 2019. Yes, they have. It's wow. loose. Yeah. yeah. So they've already started the hotels and everything. So. Yep. Oh, Symphony I mean, I guess the, Symphony of the Night is on there, JJ. Yay. Yay. Uh, I suppose it is. It's a January thing. January right? event. So, it's getting yeah. close. It's getting close. Yeah. Because they got to plan it before the holidays. So right. Is this? Uh, maybe it's time to do some do 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 new. Seem to like this segment, so we're gonna keep doing a little bit of it. A little bit of it. A little bit of it. Sounds good. Uh, let's do it. Let's talk about another thing coming up that is a event. BlizzCon. Yeah. It's a thing. Is it time to start BlizzCon speculation? Or should we just hang on? Because there's been some Diablo in your Diablo. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's there's certainly some amount of speculation to be had since Blizzard publicly commented on it. Yep. Uh, First of all, Diablo's had a wonderful month. They're launching, during BlizzCon, they're launching Diablo on the Switch. Yeah, the they Di announced a Diablo themed switch. 
They're in the midst of a huge treasure hunt bundle giveaway thing where you can win real weapons from Diablo or switch bundles or copies of the game or all sorts of crazy stuff like that. That sounds pretty uh, pretty good so far. And, and then they released a map for BlizzCon and people went ape. Well, I mean, there was a big spot right after the uh, initial... Uh, opening ceremony for Diablo, and that's usually the place they do those big panels for what's next in World of Warcraft right after they announce the expansion, or what is Overwatch right after they announced that. <laughs> so that seems to point towards there being some Diablo thing to talk about, right? Michael, I, I don't know if he's even giving you a fair shake here. They took the area that is normally for the opening ceremony. Okay. They cut it by a third. They put a tiny little box in there that says Diablo 3 demo area and left a gigantic open space next to it for the grilled cheese cart. Who knows? I think all I have to say is, hmm. Well, they didn't like that. And JJ, what did they send out after people started saying, hey, guess what? There's going to be some Diablo. Uh, you know, we're certainly working on things, but maybe don't get your hopes up too much. <laughs> that's the most Blizzard statement of wow. all time. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, that's a paraphrase. I don't remember their exact corporate wording, but it was basically just as bloodless, like, guys, there's not going to be Diablo 4, but we're probably working on it, but we can't talk. So, uh, <laughs> not this year, I guess. Please so then what the don't. heck are they going to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> what did they leave this giant open area for? Yeah. yeah what if we've kind of gone through everything at this point and they've left nothing for BlizzCon unless uh Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I'm pretty confused. Uh I think uh I think the whole internet is like why? But we still have no band. That's the other thing. I was actually speaking about this like the other day. Uh, you know, it's coming up here in a very few number of days. No announced band. That I, seems awfully short, isn't it? Normally, don't you know by now? We should have known a month ago. Yes. So and now I have two theories. Okay, let's hear them because I am very curious. The smaller stage, no band. So when, or, when you say the smaller stage, I mean, uh, did they change the way the floor is laid out? Yes. You, have you not seen this? Uh, this map. Look, pull up the map. They rearranged that whole room where the main stage is. And there is less, the third less room. So I have two theories. One is they rearranged the room that way because they don't think they need that for the band because they're not having a band. Or two, because they ha now have the Hearthstone arena and the actual basketball arena. Right. They've now put Overwatch in that big arena where StarCraft was. Maybe they're putting the band in the actual arena where there are more seats. And the band is so big they don't want to spike BlizzCon ticket resales ahead of time. Oh, interesting. I had certainly never considered that second option. I mean, if you get a big enough band, a $200 BlizzCon ticket is way cheap. Sure. I mean, I think you and I would both argue that for where we ended up during that Metallica concert a few years ago. Or I will never forget that. Yeah. More than a few years, actually, at this point. Uh, um, okay, we're getting old. Yes. yes. <laughs> the point of the podcast. Uh, we, we were gamers. Yes. Uh now but yeah, that was heads. that the was old metalheads—the only people at the BlizzCon that knew Metallica songs. <laughs> not true. Uh, very clearly, not true. There were some people that were way more into it than you or I. Uh, true. However, we did walk from the back of an entire concert to the front and into the pit. Yes. Uh, yeah. Literally, as they started playing, the room just completely emptied. Um, which is insane. Yes. For that big of a band. I mean, it, essentially, we paid for an entire convention for the price of what would have been like cut rate pit tickets. Yep. Uh, yeah, for a Metallica. So you know, like obviously, uh, I suppose they could do something like that again. Who knows? Yep. Um, 
or they could just say, nah, dog, and we don't get a concert at all, which was sort of where I was leaning. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm 50-50 split on those two options and really nothing in between. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, I had not looked at this uh, map before. I should have done that. Wow. Right. Uh, moving on, Gwent is getting Thronebreaker this week. And their giant... Um, homecoming, homecoming update so, all releasing by the time this podcast reaches your ears probably you know this podcast liked that game and uh, Thronebreaker is getting decent reviews so if you're interested in that it's coming out I think I'm, I'm probably going to check that out at some point good you should do that we should all hear about it yeah. uh, let's muscle through some more news here the GTX RTX battle the 2070 uh, is not any faster than a GTX 1080 you guys Really? Did they have they officially speed tested it? Real world tests Benchmark? show nothing. It's just a basically a line. Uh, yeah, it's like a little jump and then a line. So, so unless you have specialized uh stuff for it, there's really no point. Don't bother. Bummer. Bethesda wants you to know that Fallout seventy six is going to have some bugs. I'm going to rewrite that news <laughs> uh, title. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to rewrite the news title to be Bethesda ri reminds people they make games with bugs. <laughs> uh, news at 11. Anyone shocked? Who could be shocked by that? How long has it been since a Devil May Cry game? A really long? No, wait, not that long. When did that DMC reboot game come out? Mm, I don't know. A couple of years now? Yeah. It has, I feel like it has not been that long. It's Are been a few years series anything uh i certainly played some of them how well i mean how big a fan of that would you say you are moderate moderate mediocre? yeah maybe you would buy it on sale yeah how about an 8600 dollar uh limited edition bundle that comes with his jacket i mean is it gold <laughs> <laughs> the jacket is a red leather duster that dante wears I don't know how you can charge that amount of money. I mean, I understand it must be like a one-of-a-kind prop or something. Yeah. No. No? Okay. JJ, this one's for you. I love it. Sean Bean. Yes. That's not the part that's for you. Oh. That's the part that's for me. Dang. <laughs> I like Sean Bean. Here's the part that's for you. Sean Bean's going to be in Hitman 2. Yes. That's how good. Quickly, how quickly does he die? Well, well it, he's the first elusive target in the game. I was going to say, <laughs> if the uh, Hitman community is anything to go by, it will be very quickly. <laughs> so he's literally the first one to die. That's cool. I assume. I really like uh, Hitman 1 and Hitman 2 is coming out soon, which I will probably also play, and that's rad. <laughs> I, Sean Bean is a great person for that, though. I think they had uh, Gary Busey last year. As an elusive target? <laughs> Let's say that's not a decision I would have made. Uh, he was the wild card. Oh. <laughs> is he ever? Yeah. Uh, and I think uh, they said Sean Bean is called the Undying, which I think is a funny name for a guy who dies all the time. Awesome. <laughs> uh, their elusive target stuff was great before, so um, yeah, I, I imagine they will continue that tradition. A game with a lot of deaths in it. Battletech. Yeah. We took some time off from talking about Battletech, which I'm sure Michael liked. <laughs> they, uh, they're they throwing down a season pass, which, by the way, is on sale for 40 bucks. They're asking for 40 bucks on a yes. 40-ish dollar game. It is a three-content expansion season pass. Um the first one being this Flashpoint thing uh, that they have been talking about for a while. I think there is now a video of that out there if people want to know what it is. Um, but yeah, that's coming out soon. I want to say November time frame. Mm -hmm. uh, they named the next uh, DLC expansion thing called Urban Warfare. And then expansion number three is question mark. <laughs> Yay. Uh, but if you buy that season pass, you get all of them. Uh, of course, you could buy them piecemeal, 
Uh, but it sounds like the season pass is a significant discount since it's, I guess it's on sale right now for $40 and they're $20 each. So, yeah. Uh, they're sure proud of what they're doing, I guess. Hey, I mean, Andrew, is this going to be a good excuse for you and probably I to play more Battletech? I spent the money already. Yeah. Yeah. So, (laughs) you know, uh. I'm going to rant for just two seconds on this. I'm really upset that I can't get the flipping Pokemon achievement to drop for me. Still in battle I have tech? every mech in the game. I've spent at least 25 hours flying around looking for another Atlas, hoping that that was the problem. And I haven't found one. And I'm very concerned that like many games when they drop some expansions to this thing the old achievements will not work anymore well i was gonna ask have you have you checked some of the forums to see if maybe the achievement is bugged it was bugged before 1.0.2 or something like that which of course since we were backers and big fans of this game we played it immediately right Mm -hmm. so if you collected any mechs before that uh the solution sometimes has been to jj get ready for this one Ready and from all your stock, from your storage, ready mm-hmm. all your mechs. Gosh, that's going to take a long time. You only oh, well, have so I've many slots. Too. I've done it. <laughs> so there are two atlases in that game, though. There's the one that you get as a story one, yep. and then there's Spoilers. the other one that you can get. Uh, Yes, the other one that you can get would be the one that I've spent 25 hours looking for and cannot find. Oh, I just got it through Salvage. Salvage from where? I don't know. Five star missions. Yeah. And then I, I blew them up very selectively. <laughs> I have not found one in a five star mission ever. Ooh, that's some bad luck right there. I get stalkers every single time. Yeah, there are a lot of stalkers. And... So I'm a little bit concerned that when this thing drops, it's going to break the achievement, and then I'm really never going to be able to get it, and it's going to piss me off. I don't know. Um, I mean, they're adding some new mechs, so hard to yep. say. Um, hard to say. But, you know, they're talking about integrating that thing in a way that is, like, continuant. Yeah, yeah, so... Yeah, it sounds like the, they're all going to be sort of seamless, which makes me wonder how you go back to the game without just starting over. So they have said uh, that there is a mode that they're adding where you can start in a... I forget what they're calling it, but like you career mode. Yes, you career. Get the Argo, and you just sort of fly around. Yes, and there's no story missions, so you just have to survive off the randomized stuff. And you can there's more. They're doing more stuff with the alliances and the various factions and stuff, which is yeah. probably good because that stuff could use could have used a little fleshing out. True. My main qualm, and hopefully it gets fixed, is that the game just takes one million years to do anything between menus. Uh, go back and delete some Deleted of Deleted all my saves. saves. Okay. I already know. All right. Never mind. That was all Still I had. Still takes a million. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, if anybody has other suggestions other than deleting my saves or wants to chat about Battletech because we love it, where? Uh, that would be podcast at wewergamers.com, an email address where we definitely read all your email. Uh, you could also get at us on Twitter and Instagram at We Were Gamers. Uh, I know it sounds sarcastic that JJ says where we definitely read all your email. We do, though. It sounds like he's ignoring it. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, we definitely read it. We do. No, uh, no, we do. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Hey, seriously. Mm-hmm. Please send us some email. Yeah. Uh, and on Facebook, you know, like that page. Do that stuff. Subscribe to this podcast. Tell your friends. I am sincerely concerned that I've made a bad trade. I was high on my trade for two weeks, and now Sony Michelle busted up his knee really bad. But not super bad, but kind of bad. Yeah, they said um, no structural damage. So This is fantasy football. Yeah, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> if you can't tell. Cause we, how, should we do start doing music drops for this show? <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> so I was just going to say that's up to you, dude. <laughs> uh and um 
much as I expected uh, Odell Beckham. Okay, so my trade to recap was uh, I sent off Drew Brees, Odell Beckham, and Derrick Henry for Sony Michelle and Cam Newton. Cam Newton has panned out. Yeah. Uh, he gets garbage points or, you know, leads his team to fourth quarter comebacks, having yeah. gone scoreless all game. Three three touchdowns in 15 minutes. You know, okay. if he played quarterback for the other three quarters, they could have had like 48 points. Nah, dude. Yeah, what a... <laughs> I don't I don't blame him, though. That's the, that's the riverboat Ron right there. That's the Norv Turner. That's what that is. I don't know, man. I'm, Drew Brees sucked comparatively. He, the game was not bad, but yeah, it was an away game. He didn't do amazing. He put up okay numbers. Derek salvaged Henry's by the fact that a lot of those numbers seem to go to Michael Thomas, who I also had. Yeah. yeah. I'm just glad my season's not over and that Sony Michelle is in IR. But now I'm down Cooper Cup and Sony Michelle to injuries, and I'm sincerely concerned about my team. I think Cup uh, comes back maybe in not this week, but next week after that. I, I felt like I was going to have to report to you some hubris when I said that my previous week was my my low, my my basement, my floor at 87 points. Oh. And uh -oh. despite losing Sony Michelle, I'm going to just run through my team here real quick for you guys. Christian McCaffrey stinking it up. Taylor Gabriel doing nothing. And Joe Mixon just forgetting that they were playing football. Along with the rest of his team, I was just going to say the whole yeah. Bengals team, <laughs> the Chicago Bears letting the freaking New England score thirty-eight points. I still made eighty-nine points, you guys. Hey, Sony Michelle got one point. And I still got eighty-nine, so I was right. This team's not bad. I just so am it, sincerely concerned about putting up points next week. If it makes you feel better, Andy, I'm in an eight-team league, and you almost outscored me this week. I am in a twelve-team league. <laughs> That's bad yeah my 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 week was headlined by andy dalton with a whopping 9.92 .9 points that's higher than the oh, seven oh, point oh. something he got in the league that i'm in oh no thankfully i don't have him can i play cam newton next week against baltimore the drew Brees did fine can i play christian mccaffrey next week against baltimore hmm uh, I think I, I have to, to make that play. We'll see how it pans out. Yeah, I mean, you start your studs, right? So I think I'm also yes. going to play him. So who who else? Oh who else? Or unless you're going to make a trade, right? Who else? Who else? Well, I tried to make a trade this past week. I offered basically Sammy Watkins and O.J. Howard. Not a bad offer. People might take that if they're in the lower half of the league. For most people's 60-point receivers, so they're number 1.5 or 2. And it was flat-out turned down by everybody uh, off the board. And all those teams lost. Well, So I don't really know what people are thinking on the trade front. They got what they deserved. This dude started <laughs> Jordan Reed, and he wouldn't take O.J. Howard and Sammy Watkins. For who did I offer it for? Oh, for Keenan Allen. I don't know what eh. he's thinking. Eh. The problem is getting two people in place of one is not always valuable. So uh, I I think that that trade in particular holding Chris Hogan. is good because O.J. Howard at a, is at a position where there aren't a lot of good ones. Yeah. Um. I know we talked about this here, but I don't know if we talked about it on the podcast. Uh, there was a trade in my league for Le'Veon Bell this past week. Mm -hmm. uh, someone received Le'Veon Bell and Sterling Shepard for James White and Doug Baldwin. Was this before the Sony Michelle injury? Yes. And Ooh. this was before this week when Bell did not show up today. Uh, again, first of all, Bell is not showing up before the trade deadline. I agree with that, and that is what I assumed. But uh, there was a lot of talk out there in the the Twitter sphere and wherever else that people thought he was going to come in after the bye week. There was stories being reported. So okay, well, but he's not coming back. He's before not the trade deadline. So Seems unlikely. He signs his tender after, and they can't trade him. Seems unlikely. Uh, 
so yeah, I mean Sterling Shepard did okay tonight. He got like sixteen all, points. Yeah, twenty in a PP, half PPR. So right, yeah, that's pretty good. But uh, James White go got, uh, let's say, way more than that. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And Doug Baldwin also did pretty good, although his uh-huh. bye week is coming up here. Um, I would and Le'Veon Bell that. has a hot zero. So Ooh. I would always have taken the not Le'Veon side of this deal in a heartbeat. I would have clicked accept without even thinking about it. Yeah, so definitely the guy who made the trade, uh, who received Le'Veon, is doing quite badly in the league. Um, so oh, so he's he, hoping to turn it around late. I assume that's what he's trying to do. He also earlier he in the that. he also earlier in the year made a trade to receive David Johnson. Oh God! Oh no! Uh, wow. And he traded Mahomes. Oh no! <laughs> so at at the time he oh, made that driven oh, off the cliff. <laughs> at the time he made that trade, though, it had been two games in. I and and Johnson just Mahomes looked bad. No, no but Mahomes looked like a flash in the pan. He was like, oh, no he's in the way. fall. Well, obviously, he turned out to be wrong. I know that, but you don't trade a dude that's hot. Right I understand that. It's the beginning of the season. I understand the logic there. And honestly, David Johnson, while being awful, has not been like unplayable. He's done actually. He's, start, he's started to put it together. He has Look, done he better than Christian McCaffrey in several weeks. So Agreed. Yes. So, you know, he, he got a good player there he was very weak in running back okay but then now he just traded away james white so he sony michelle was his only other running back and now oh, he's he had a, both yeah he had white and michelle he's a pats dude. guy dude no yeah so now he has sony michelle oh, and david johnson as his running backs <laughs> oh gosh uh, needless to say his team is proceeding to one and six <laughs> yeah well, where's everyone sitting at? I'm assuming, Michael, uh, you were implying that you... Yeah, it was uh, it was not a good result. Yeah. So in my league, there will be... Let me do a quick count here. One, two, three, four. There will be four of the eight teams sitting at three and four next week, going into next week. Wow. Anyone below that? No. Uh, wow. Sorry, one team. There will be one team at... One and six. I'm I miss eight team leagues. <laughs> you know that's actually though pretty close to what the uh, league at my work is. Uh, I knocked off the guy in first place this week, um, but now he and I will have the same record, so I don't actually move up. Uh, and the, there's another guy going to one and six, but then the bottom. Let's see, five. No, wait, six. Se- six, seven, eight, and nine all are going to have the same record. Like the bottom half of the bracket is really strong in this league, so mm. uh, there could be a lot of shuffling going on moving into the end second half of the season here. Ours has stuff from six to one and one to six, and uh, a decent spread in between, and spreading even more this week. So um, I'm moving up into the top three here. I think at five and two, because sometimes you have your floor at 89 points and other people's floor is much lower. <laughs> hmm. Hey, a win is a win. Hey, you, you know, you just got to play for the averages is my, my go to. And John Brown really stepped it up this week. So thank you for that. I want to mail that guy some flowers or something. <laughs> Did anybody in either of you guys' league get uh, hosed by Melvin Gordon being a late scratch in yes. London? Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Not me, but I'm sure someone must have. Yeah. It looked like One the guy did. looks like the guy didn't end up starting him, but he was not happy about it today. Why would you be not happy about it if you didn't start him? No, he was not happy about him not playing. Oh, he was mad that he had to pick some random dude up off the waivers in the. The morning oh, on really? Sunday, dude. Give give Melvin Gordon a bye week if you're going to play the Titans. I mean, there's no reason not to. I guess they almost lost that game technically, but yeah, I mean, it was a very close game. <laughs> the Titans literally lost it up by going for two. Speaking of trades, by the way, Amari Cooper gone. I mean, to uh, Dallas, possibly can't... Le'Veon Bell on the block. Carlos Hyde to the Jags. Uh, I'm just more surprised that anyone was willing to pay a first rounder for Amari Cooper. Sounds like Patrick Peterson is telling the Cardinals they need to trade him or he won't play anymore. Ooh. 
The league is a mess. Oh, yeah, DT on the block. That's oh, yeah. A shocker. Yeah. DT's on the block. Possibly Sanders as well. I don't know why the Broncos would fly right into rebuilding mode. They're not that bad. Eh. I mean, their defense is still very good. Mm, the corners aren't so great. As evidenced by the defensive score they put up, I think they're just fine. That's Arizona, though. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, rants, ranting done. What do you What do you guys need? You got to get it out now. I think I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I'm awesome.